Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, Pastor Reg here at the Woody Point Studio. Uh, it seems a bit strange being at the Woody Point Studio when we're having meetings back at church, but that's okay. Uh, that's just my problem. I'm here with Rich, my furry friend. He's just at my feet, just down there. Uh, but I'm afraid he's not the only furry friend. We've you can't really see them, but we've got there's some pawpaw trees back here the burns has planted them and they're very productive we don't do anything there's this all these pawpaws and there's this huge big one that's been growing we've been watching it you can't miss it it's bigger than all the others but uh, it's gone missing we woke up this morning and whoosh, gone uh, we think there's another furry friend uh, the possum variety that Richie must be friends with I think it's uh, he's an accessory he should have been chasing the possum away but he sleeps on his bed great wonder why we feed him anyway uh, I've also noticed too now that I'm back in my backyard in the last week or so there's weeds have started growing in the lawn again unbelievable amount of weeds anyway I'm having a good winch uh, that'll help illustrate what I'm wanting to talk about today. Uh, yesterday uh, we had a good time. We do, uh, we've been doing it ever since the lockdown's been on, uh, me and our family, because they're all spread around. Uh, Mix at home here. Joe and his wife live on the south side in, you know, Corona suburb. And then uh, there's a son, he's in Adelaide. And my two eldest, my two daughters, they live in Melbourne. So they're really starting to feel it. So we, we have these online games where they're interactive. We Zoom and play games uh, online. It's, it's, it's really good fun. And it also helps us connect uh, when we're locked down. What's wrong, Rich? No, stay, stay away. Um, Oh, sit down, sit, stay. Um, he's, he, he, yeah, he's gone, good. We've, you know, the two poor daughters, they're stuck. Uh, they're not allowed to go out. Uh, they got to wear masks and all the rest. So we, we thought we'd do it yesterday afternoon and uh, encourage them a bit by playing some games. And... Uh, I'd like to tell you the story of what happened when the first one was born. That's quite significant for me, you know, it's the story of the firstborn. Uh, she was born in 1991 and Polly carried her for, I think, I think it's supposed to be, is it 40 weeks? Well, into the 42nd week, uh, things were... <laughs> When is this baby going to come? Anyway, eventually it started, the, the you know, the labour started and all the rest. And in we go to hospital and starts this long, incredible day of torture. It was torture for Polly, I, I'm admitting that, but it was also torture for me. I always joke, uh, I was sitting there half asleep uh, next to Polly's bed and she was holding... I was holding her hand, giving comfort as I do, and every 10 minutes or so, she'd squeeze my hand. Oh, and it really hurt, I was suffering. Anyway, uh, I know that's a, it's a joke, I get that. But what happened was, um, when, when the waters broke, they discovered that uh, because she'd been in there so long, that baby Ellen, she wasn't called that yet, but that she'd passed a motion in, she'd done a poo before she was born. And so in the fluid that she was living in was her own poo. So the doctors weren't happy with that. Now what that meant was, was that when she was born, they took her away. They took her away to clean out her lungs and to give her some antibiotics. Now, I don't know if you've had a child, but it, it was, uh, 
the pain, the suffering, it's unbelievable. All kudos to women everywhere for uh, giving birth. And the uh, uh, it's hard to describe how quickly all of that disappears when the baby actually is born and the miracle of new life is seen and the the suffering turns to joy now when ellen was born she got whisked away the doctors took her and she was taken away we we hadn't even nursed her or anything and both pauline and i were both overcome with joy what was tension hurting suffering delivery bang baby gone and now we're just there and there's absolute joy absolute joy so much in fact that there were tears we were both crying anyway this doctor came the one that took the baby away and was cleaning out her lungs and giving her antibiotics came back to explain herself and to make sure we weren't angry that uh, they'd taken away the baby anyway she springs us with our tears of joy but she misread them and thought oh no <laughs> they're upset because i pinched their baby <laughs> but we we were just so overcome with the whole delight of it all that we had tears of joy and we we got to know that doctor really well she looked after uh, baby ellen really well and well there's no effect all the other siblings think that there has been a significant impact on her but there hasn't really she's pretty fine i'm telling you that story because it's an illustration jesus used a similar in illustration uh, to describe something now i've been talking about jesus's teaching in the upper room i've been talking about that because it, it's really describing the culmination of a journey that he said he was going to take. He was going on a journey. No one could go with him. And after he'd gone, he would quickly return. And it was for our benefit that he would go away uh, because of what would happen when he came back. Now, we, we understand, I've been explaining it to you, that it's... Uh, Jesus's passion, death, burial, resurrection, ascension to heaven. That's the journey he could take, he could only take by himself. But from heaven, he would then send a comforter and he would uh, bring so much to us. And that's, that's what I've been talking about. Well, in, in the, uh, upper room the teaching goes on it doesn't stop there the ministry of the spirit uh, is applied even further and i want to talk about that uh, over the next couple of weeks because i think it's a significant thing what's supposed to happen because the father has sent the son the son has gone on this journey and then returned via the agency of the spirit what that means is we're supposed to have joy. I'm going to read it to you from uh, John chapter 16 and I'm going to read from verse 17. Some of his disciples said to one another, what does he mean by saying in a little while you'll see me no more and then after a little while you will see me? Now we know what that means. He's about literally the next day to start a journey that no one can go with him on. He's going to go and depart. He's going to eventually, he's going to ascend to heaven and disappear. But then, via the Spirit, he will return and be present. Uh, in a little while you'll see me no more, and then after a little while you'll see me. And because I'm going to the Father, they kept asking, what does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he's saying. Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this, so he said to them, 
Are you asking one another what I meant when I said in a little while you'll see me no more and then after a little while you will see me? I tell you the truth. You will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come, but when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again and you will rejoice and no one will take away your joy. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. I tell you the truth, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. <coughs> Excuse me. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. So there's joy. And there's the illustration of the birth that Jesus used. See, he was going to go away and there would be grief. But upon his return via the ministry of the Spirit, we know it as the ministry of the Comforter, then there would be joy. Joy that no one can take away. Joy that in our prayer life is fulfilled. Now that's what I want to talk about. Joy. See, in these COVID times, you know, I noticed it just this last weekend, you know, the girls coming back from Melbourne, bringing the virus up here, and the change, the mood has changed because of that. People are more afraid. <gasps> oh no, we're going to be like Melbourne. But there should be joy that no one can take away. Jesus is going away and his coming back should achieve for us a joy. And then in chapter 17, he's in his prayer for his disciples and for those who come believing after them. They've got joy as well. In verse 13, I'm coming to you now, but I say these things while I'm still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy with them. The full measure of joy. Now Jesus suffered. He suffered heaps. But he still had joy. The apostles suffered. And they had joy. So joy, the joy we're talking about here is not some, some surface happiness. It's not, it's, it's not something that, you know, is just the fruit of jolliness like there are some people who are just jolly and happy. It's not talking about that. It's, it's a settled sense of being okay, irrespective of circumstances. No one's able to take it away. And it comes in, in relationship to God. And what I'd like to talk about over the next few weeks, in my devotions anyway, is the circumstances, there's some words, there's some language that Jesus uses here in chapter 17 that provide the context, the setting for that joy in our lives. And I think we're in danger when things are going bad, when there's difficult things happening around about us. Sometimes we start to look in the wrong places. And these three words uh, are going to pull us back to, to understand where the joy comes from. It, it can't be taken away. And so how to rest, how to live in the joy that Jesus is going to bring, uh, that's what I want to talk about in the next few weeks. So I think that's enough of an introduction. I don't want to take up all your day. Some of us have got uh, stuff to do. Um, I know Richie, he's got some sleep to have. And I don't know if anyone knows how to train your dog to scare the possums away. Um, I'd love to hear about that. But Lord, 
I'm going to pray. Lord, we ask that you'd help us to know your joy. We know it doesn't mean that you'll make us feel happy all the time. But we want to know that settled sense that we're okay, that comes from being aware of our connection with you. And Lord, I pray that you would help us each one, each one of us who knows you and walks with you. Pray that you'd help us to know your joy. Lord, there's grief and your disciples knew grief when you left, but then you came in the person of the Spirit and brought joy, joy that no one could take away. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to know that joy in these difficult days here. We pray for our friends and families in Melbourne and ask that you'd keep them safe and that all of the restrictions will work and the virus will have less of an impact there. We pray that it won't spread here and that we will be able to maintain our freedoms. And so, Lord, we, uh, we're in your hands. There's no better place to be. Lord Jesus, we see you uh, in heaven and we ask that as we place ourselves in your hands, that you would fill us with your joy. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's goodbye from me, folks. I'll uh, uh, see you next week. Don't forget, these morning devotions are keeping on going. And even though church is starting up again, we'll um, keep these going. Uh, it's starting up. It's still not the same, you know, with all the social distancing and so on. So stay, stay safe and keep watching online. And if you need anything, give us a buzz and we'll see what we can do. But God bless. See you from the Woody Point Studio.